All right, in this series, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a muslin mock-up of the front and back bodice for our size four dress form, and then of course the sleeve to match. At this point, we're now ready to start sewing our muslins. Let's start here with our front and back muslins. Now, so far we've been handling our muslins keeping them folded as well as attached to the original pattern piece. And that way nothing's gonna stretch out or lose its shape. I wanted to show you here, here's a piece from the front. And you can see here where we've cut into the pattern piece and back out to make the shaping for the armhole. All of these threads here are going into the bias grains. And what will happen is, is this will easily start to stretch out and lose its shape. So you can see just by that little pool right there, we're already starting to stretch it in the armhole area. And if I were to come in here and start ironing this flat again, you might notice that if I compare it back to the original pattern piece, that it's no longer the same shape. Something that we can do is on the sewing machine, we could put a stitch along here that will give it some structure to tell it to stay exactly as it is. And that stitch that we're gonna do inside of here is called a stay stitch. The areas that we wanna stay stitch is gonna be the armholes from the front and back as well as the neckline. After we sew the darts in the waist, then we're also gonna put a stay stitch at the waist. So let's go ahead and take the pins off of our pattern pieces, and we're gonna go over to the sewing machines and put a stay stitch in here. Here's an example of doing it incorrectly. What you don't want to do is you don't want to keep sewing this in a straight line and pulling your fabric to become straight with the machine. Also at the end here, you don't want to hold on to this corner because it's so delicate, it's just stretching towards me. And then if I finish my stitch and I'm just holding the fabric as I pull this off, you can see that some of the threads start to pull tight on the fabric itself. Instead, you have to be holding the threads as you pull this off the machine so it doesn't do that. So if I were to continue using this muslin as part of my mock-up, it's no longer giving me the correct seams that I did as a pattern maker because I'd sewn it incorrectly. Especially if I were to come in here and try and loosen these threads back out, it's losing its shape. It's no longer the same armhole. So now when I compare it back to the pattern piece, it's lost its shape a little bit. So you can see it's kind of ripply, stretched out, and the corner up here is going further than the pattern piece itself. Let me take out my uh, scrap piece that I've been working on and I'll show you some common mistakes that students do on these tight corners. So again, here's my center front. I'm gonna flip this over so I can start at center front. Now a common mistake that I'll see is a student will sew for like four or five stitches going straight. And they're completely ignoring out here on the mark that the uh, fabric is starting to cover the mark, so they're no longer sewing at half of an inch. Now, it, this is getting to be more like five-eighths of an inch. I'll do a couple more. And then, at some point, they'll realize, oh, I need to start turning the corner. So some people will lift up the foot and turn the fabric, put the foot back down, and keep going, trying to get back now to the half inch. And then once they start to see it, then they start following the curve. Another mistake here is 
this curve keeps going and going and going, but at one point towards the end, they'll get a little bit lazy on following this edge of the fabric. And they'll start drifting here, making the stitch getting larger and making the seam allowance getting larger and larger. So you can see here, I can see the edge of my fabric is covering up my mark. And this is incorrect because right now I'm sewing probably at about 5 eighths of an inch instead of half of an inch. Now over here on the sewing machine, we already have it set up where it's going to sew at 12 stitches per inch. And then I'm going to start here with the front armhole. What I want to do is, when I'm sewing this, I want the bodice to turn on the machine horizontally. So let me show you first. Line up your raw edge with the half inch seam allowance and start sewing without a back tack. As you sew along the armhole, let the whole garment turn on the tabletop so you're not stretching out and pulling on the corners. At the end, don't do any back tack. Be sure that you're holding the threads as you pull it off the machine and cut it away. So now if I compare this back to the original pattern piece, I can see that I have not changed the shape of the armhole and I did not stretch out the corners. When I'm doing a stay stitch here on the necklines, I always like to start at center front or center back. Now for the front pattern piece, if I want to start at center front, what I need to do is I need to flip this over so it's the wrong side up. When I come under the machine, what I want to do is the first two stitches should be square here at center front and then I'll follow the curve all the way through. So I'm going to line up my needle right with center front. I'm making sure that my seam allowance is exactly at the half inch mark. I'll hold the threads to the back. And then my first two stitches is just square with that center front. And now I need to start following the raw edge of my fabric along the curve hitting right here at the half inch mark. And my eye is always across from the needle right here at that half inch mark. So this is what I'm looking at. And it's pretty much a continuous curve the whole way. And again, when I get to the end here, I can't hold on to this corner because I'm going to stretch it out. So now you can see here at center front, it's square just for those first two stitches and then it's following the same curve that I drafted on the pattern piece. So now you can see here I've stay stitched the armholes of the front and the back as well as the neckline. And then I can come in and I can compare it back to the original pattern piece and make sure that everything is still exactly how the pattern piece is and nothing has stretched out or shrunk down. Now because we did not back tack at the beginning or the end, you could come in and grab the bottom thread and just gently pull this back into the muslin and get this armhole to just slightly shrink down a little bit. Now obviously you don't want to sit here and be doing this all day long. 
but the reason why we don't do the back tack is just in case there's one seam that you did mess up on, you can still go back and fix it without having to recut. Now if it was really bad, I would consider also just taking these threads out. Now what I've done is I've shrunk it back down a little bit so it's actually a titch too small. So it's perfect down in this area. It's a little bit short up here. And what I can do is I can hold my finger on the threads right here and as I scratch along here, I'm loosening it back out just until it hits perfect right back on the line and then I stop. And then now since I fixed this and it matches back to the pattern piece, what I want to do is I want to steam it pressing straight down so you're not moving across, just straight down right on top. So basically I'm steaming it and then you got to let it cool off. And while it's here, flat on my ironing board, I could take the paper pattern and check one last time that everything is good to go. If you're noticing that your seams are shrinking up, your tension is too tight, or if they're stretching out, then you're pulling on the fabric while you're sewing, and you as a sewer need to fix that. So here what I've done is I've sewn along and I have my tension too tight. There's two ways you could tell that this is happening. Number one, you could see these little tiny wrinkles in here and they're almost little puckers. The raw edge is moving up and down, kind of like a little roller coaster. And then the other thing is, is there's some volume built in here. It's almost like this is some kind of a eased in sleeve shoulder or something. So if you're noticing this on your pieces, then you know right away that your tension is, is way too tight. Because we're not using a back tack at the beginning and the end, we're able to come in and relax this tension back out. So come into the seam here a good three inches. And what I'm going to do is with this hand, I'm going to hold the thread so it doesn't move. And with this hand, I'm going to start scratching on the seam and getting those threads to relax going back out towards the edge. And you can see right there it's already smooth. So here I'll lift my finger up. Here you can see where there's too much tension and here you can see where I've smoothed it out. So now I can move my finger back a little more and continue getting this and I need to relax it all the way back out to the edge. So here you can see now, I've relaxed all of this side back out into the edge. And then this other half here still has the tension in there. So now I'll come over and start working on this side. So I'm going to hold the threads down and scratch out towards this edge. And then I can move in a little bit deeper. And then here I'll hold it a little bit beyond the halfway point so I can get this last bit right here. So now as I come around, I can see that it's kind of shrinking and gathering and getting ripply. So my tension here is too tight. What I can do here on my scrap fabric is I can go ahead and let the tension out. Now for me, I know it's way too tight, so I'm going to let a whole bunch out. Then I'll continue sewing, but I, I want to know where I'm starting from. So with my pencil, I could put a little mark right here to let me know now this is continuing on. 
then I can come around and I can see that, hey, this looks good. It's nice and smooth and flat. And I want to do one more test. Let's put another mark here. And I'm switching the stitch all the way to the longest stitch possible. And I can see there's still some tension inside of there. So I still need to keep letting this tension out. Since I'm at the end of the fabric here, what I'll do is I'll just sew down, turn around, and we'll come back along through here somewhere. Now I can see it's all nice and relaxed, even on the largest stitch. And then I'll set my stitch length back to 12 stitches per inch. And we'll just come in and just double check one last time. Yep, everything looks good. Now that we checked, all of our stay stitching is good to go. All the pattern pieces still match perfectly. We're ready to start doing the darts. For now, let's concentrate on doing the dart from the front. Now, usually when you sew a dart, you're gonna fold the fabric correct sides together, sew the dart, and the dart will be on the inside. So on the outside here, all you would see is just a seam. But we're using this for fitting purposes. And we want to have this dart facing outwards. So when you're doing a fitting, you can always pin more, or you could take some of it apart and let some of it release. When we are sewing this up, we're going to have the seam allowances coming here to the outside. So you're going to notice the darts on the outside here, the shoulder seam. If I look at the under seam, the underarm seam, as well as the darts in the back, it's all sticking out. And the reason that is is because later on when we come in to do a fitting back to our client or a dress form, if there's an issue going on with the dart or the side seams or shoulders, you can always take those and use some pins and make them smaller or tighter. Or you can come in here and you can pop these threads to just release it and then we can have add some more room back into this. So we want to actually do it incorrectly by having this dart coming out. So here we are, this is the correct side up. Here's the dart tip and here's the center of the dart at the bottom. And we want to fold perfectly going to the outside. So I have the wrong sides together and I can come down here and I can match the notches from the two dart legs as well as getting this lined up perfectly at the dart tip. Now what I want to do to check my work is if I turn this over I should see I'm folding it perfectly on the dart tip and on mine I still need to come out just a little more and then I can double check the notches here at the bottom. So I'm looking at this from both sides. The next thing I want to do is let's take a pin and we're going to go through the dart leg right here at the bottom by the waist. And when I go through to the other side, it needs to be going through the pencil on both sides. So for instance, this one, it's not. So what I need to do is I need to shift the layers in between my fingers until my pin is going through the pencil on both sides. Then I can finish by pinning this on the pencil line and back through to the front and the pin is going in the direction where it's pointing all the way back towards the dart tip. So check yours now that you've pinned on the pencil line on both sides and you know that those two dart legs are perfectly stacked together. The next thing we want to do is up here at the dart tip, make sure you're folding that dart tip exactly in half. So check it on both sides. And then what we're going to do is when we sew this, we're going to have the excess fabric here to the left side and this folded edge to the right side. 
So having the, this way up with the fold here on my right side, I'm going to pin right at the dart tip. And I'm going through the fabric twice so the pin will stay in place. And this is going to be a guide so when I go under the sewing machine, I know exactly where to start my first stitch. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the back waist dart also. This one, we have the line going all the way through the center of the dart because that's the grain line. So it's easier for us to just come in here and we could fold right along that grain line. And then we can come down in here, make sure that we're matching up the dart legs. And as I put a pin through, it's right on the pencil. When I flip this over, it should be right on the pencil here. And then as I come back, I'm going through the pencil here and through the pencil there. And the, dart, and the pin is pointing up towards the dart tip. And I know that both of these legs are perfectly stacked right on top of each other. And up here at the dart tip, I want to have a reminder of where that's at. So I'm going to put a pin through here. And I'm looping it through twice so it'll stay in place. When you're sewing your darts, if you notice, this is basically a triangle that comes to a point. The problem is, is if you sew a pointy triangle, then later on when you start to press and iron it, and then you put it back onto your client, there will always be kind of this pointy bump on the garment itself. Ideally, the first few stitches of your dart should be following along with the edge and then it'll turn and it'll follow the dart leg itself. So if we take a closer look at it, here's the dart tip and I'm going to be sewing this direction heading towards the dart leg. And what I need to do is the first three stitches are going to just follow right along with this folded edge. And then I will turn and start following the dart leg. So actually what's happening up in the dart tip area is it's a slight curve to it, very similar to your French curve or your very form curve that will start as a curve and then turn into a straight line for the rest of the dart. When you're sewing the dart, be sure that the beginning threads are extra long, so make them as long as your hand and fingers. Then place your dart tip underneath, perfectly right under the needle. and turn the wheel with your hand and bring the needle down to where you're getting the machine needle perfectly on the dart tip and you can remove the pin that was holding it in place. Then the first three stitches are straight along the edge and I'm just going to go ahead and stitch those by turning the machine with my hand. Once I've gotten those first three stitches then I'll go ahead and start sewing a very smooth curve until I come and match up with the dart legs. Once I get to the end of the stitch, I can hold the pin that's holding the dart legs together as it's sliding out, as it's pulling into the machine. And that way I'm keeping those dart legs together as long as possible. And then I'm gonna be careful to hold the threads as I pull this out of the machine and cut it away. So here you can see I've left the beginning threads really long and don't cut these. The first three stitches were following along with the fold and then it's a nice smooth curve coming back into the dart leg and then continuing the dart leg all the way to the waist with no back tack and then I pulled it out of the machine and clipped the threads here. For these bottom threads, you can go ahead and clip those at about one inch. So here's an example of what not to do. So as we stitched down and then we were coming back to the dart leg, it was a little bit too quick of a transition and even overstepping the dart leg a little bit here. So you just want to have a smooth curve coming back into the original dart leg area. 
if you do make a mistake on one of your stitches and you want to fix it, what you do is every fourth or fifth stitch, go ahead and pop that stitch on one side of the fabric. So all the way along one side of the fabric. Then you can come over to the other side of the fabric and pull up the stitch that hasn't been clipped. And you can pull all of these stitches right back out. And then these are the threads that you clipped from the other side, so you can go ahead and just pull those out. And when you remove a seam this way, your fabric does not get damaged. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with sewing our back dart. So make sure your threads are as long as your hand plus your fingers. Bring those threads to the back. Line up the tip of your machine needle perfectly on the dart tip and pull this pin out. Hold this thread here in the back and your first three stitches will just be straight down the line and because this back dart is really narrow it basically you could see that you're just following right along with the um, dart leg itself then we'll start machine stitching following along the dart leg And when I get to the end here, I can hold the pin as the machine pulls the fabric through. And that way those dart legs will always stay on top of each other right to the very end. I'll pull this out. I can cut this down to an inch and leave the dart tip threads extra long. Now here on the back piece, we still have the shoulder dart. Let's do a quicker variation of this. So basically, I'm going to fold the dart to where I'm matching up my notches at the bottom. And I'm folding the dart tip perfectly in half. And then I want to check this side to make sure it looks the same. And I'm going to go ahead and finger press just a little crease right into that dart. Down here at the bottom, again, I want to pin this right through my pencil line and I'll make sure it's going through the pencil on this side as well. And then I'll come back through the pencil on this side and make sure it's going through the pencil on that side. And that's how I know that my dart legs are right on top of each other. Now realistically, you don't have to put a pin at the top here. It's just helpful if you're a beginner. But once you've done several darts, you, you get the idea. So again, we'll pull our threads so they're extra long. We'll get that dart tip right under the needle. I want to hold this thread so it doesn't snag. And my first three stitches are just a straight line with the fold. Then I'm going to turn and start flowing with the dart leg. And once I get down here to this pin, I can hold the pin as the machine pulls the fabric through. Again, no back tack at the end. Be sure to hold the fabrics when you're pulling it out and leave the dart tip threads long. Now back here on the tabletop, let's finish with the darts. What we're going to do is we're going to finger press these so they're flat and clean. Also, with the threads at the top here, we don't want to leave these just hanging. But we also don't want to cut them short because your dart might fall apart when you're doing a fitting with your client. What we need to do is we need to separate out these threads here so we could tie them into knots. So when I come in here to tie these into a knot, 
I want to make sure that I'm starting at the very base of the fabric. So if these threads are a little bit twisted together, get it to a point where they're untwisted and the very first thread down in there is sewing from the machine itself. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to tie these into a knot. The first knot that goes down, if you pull it too tight, you're going to actually shrink the fabric down because you're going to start pulling the thread and it's going to mess it up. So you just want to go down to where it hits at the base gently. The second knot that I'm going to do is also gentle but a little more firm. And then the third knot here is going to be what actually locks it into place. And you can pull that one a lot harder. And it's not going to mess up inside of the fabric. And then go ahead and clip these threads at about an inch. All right, so we've sewn up our three different darts and then we've tied off the dart tips. The next thing we want to do is we want to press these darts. Let's take a look here at the front. Now, this is the dart allowance, the seam allowance. And what we want to do with this is it's going to go towards center front. This is the same that you would do for sewing up regular garments. And this is exactly how we set it up when we were doing our pattern making. So this dart fits with the allowance going towards center front. And what I want you to do is, having the dart allowance going towards the front, we're going to come in here and start finger pressing right along the threads. So as I gently pull this open, I can start to see each one of the little blue threads from the sewing machine. and I'm finger pressing it perfectly right down to each little tiny thread. Again, you want to do this for short distances. If you try to just do a really long finger press, you're going to maybe shift the grains of the fabric and you might mess up the shaping of the waist down in this area. Now when you come over to the back piece, remember that the, the dart seam allowance needs to go towards center back. So this is going to be going in the opposite direction. And then we pivot this around and here we are at the shoulder dart. The shoulder dart also is going to be pressed towards center back. So find your center back and make sure you're pressing towards that. Let's take a look at these now, and you can double check yours with me. So here's center front. The waist dart is pressed towards center front. Here's center back. This waist dart is pressed towards center back, and the shoulder dart is pressed towards center back. Now that we have darts in our fabric, these are no longer flat objects. These are now three-dimensional objects. It's really important that from now on, when we're handling this, that you never press this back down flat, either with your hands. You don't want to set something heavy on top of that. And an easy way to handle this is if you were to fold your garment in half, at that dart tip, then you can move this around and it's going to hold that shape without getting crushed. So for now on, that's how I want you to handle these. So fold them at the waist dart tips. What we want to do now is we want to press these. Alright, so here's my front. Now if I lay this down on a ironing board right side up, you can see that this is bowing upwards for the shaping for the bust. 
What you don't want to do is try and come in and, and somehow press this right here. The easiest way to do this is to flip it over and to hold the shoulders upwards and then you'll see the dart here will lay flat on the tabletop all the way to the dart tip. Now since the dart allowance is pressing towards the front, there's a little bump here on this side. So it's flat here, bumping up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start where it's flat and press towards the dart to get this even more crisp and clean. Now after I've pressed it, I want to leave this shape as it's cooling off. And for me, taking a closer look, I can see that I can get even a little bit closer to the threads in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of the iron to really get in there and get that last little bit. So I'm holding the shoulders up in the air and I can use the tip of the iron to get into that dart tip and get that area to really flatten out. Now we can flip this over and have the dart in the air and have the shoulder flat on the tabletop. And this last little crease right here, this is just from when we were handling it. We can press that back out so it's flat and clean. And I'm coming along here just in the armhole area. There was a little bit of a cross wrinkle going on. I'm letting this cool off before I lift it up. So taking a closer look at this, you can see the nice round shaping of the bust dart. And there's no sharp point. Because remember, those first three stitches were going with the fold of the dart before we curved into the actual dart legs. And it's giving it that nice round shaping here. And when you're ready to handle this, go ahead and we're going to fold it in half at that dart tip area. And we'll handle it just like this, and it'll always hold that shape really nicely. And we'll never put anything heavy on top of this. So go ahead and do the same thing here for your back waist dart and back shoulder dart. And then when you're done with this, let's go ahead and we'll fold this in half right here at the back waist dart. Now that we have our darts sewn and pressed, um, let's go ahead and on the front and back down here in the waist area, let's put our stay stitch in here just to make sure that waist does not st uh, stretch out. For the front and back waist stay stitch, everything's pretty much the same. So make sure your machine is set at 12 stitches per inch. Your beginning threads should be about the same length as your longest finger. Line up your fabric so it is half of an inch from the raw edge. And hold down the back threads as you first start sewing with no back tack. As you sew along, make sure you're going over the dart and leaving it laying in the direction it should be going. Once you get to the end, make sure not to back tack. Pull this out gently while holding the threads and then clip everything down to about one inch.
Up here at the shoulder, you don't have to worry about this because it's not really gonna stretch out. It was more that we're concerned with is the curve on the waist. So far we haven't done anything with the sleeve. Go ahead and get your sleeve out now. What we're gonna do is, let's take the pin out from the pattern piece and come down here to the elbow dart. And we'll go ahead and right away, we'll just start preparing this elbow dart to sew it. So again, we want the dart seam allowance to be here to the outside of the fabric. You're gonna fold perfectly on the dart tip and match up your notches at the underarm seam. Check both sides of the dart tip to make sure you have it perfectly in half. And then let's pin the dart legs, making sure you have your pencil. Your pin is going right through the pencil on both sides. For sewing the dart, make sure your thread is long. Get the dart tip underneath the machine. Make sure your needle is going right through the beginning of the dart tip. Hold down these threads in the back. The first three stitches are a straight line. And then curve and start sewing with the dart leg itself. No back tack at the end. You can cut these threads down to an inch. And then at the dart tip, let's go ahead and tie this into three knots. So the first knot is very gentle, and the second knot also. And then that third knot is gonna lock it down so you can pull it a little bit tighter and cut your threads down to an inch. The next thing I wanna do is, I wanna put a stay stitch here at the wrist level. But if you remember, our wrist has a one inch seam allowance. So when we come in here and we're gonna stay stitch the wrist, we wanna stay stitch it at one inch. On your sewing machine, you need to know exactly where one inch is. So bring your ruler over, line up the center of the needle with the one inch mark, and you could even turn the needle down to the ruler itself, make sure it's hitting right on that. And then you can see off to the side here, if there's a notch on your machine already, so for instance, mine has one, but I went ahead and I colored that in red, so it's easier for you to see in the video, and it's easier for me to see as well. So check your machine and make sure you know exactly where that one inch mark is. Then we'll go ahead and we'll line up our raw edge with that one inch mark, hold the threads down in the back, And remember, as you're stay stitching, don't hold this corner or else you're going to stretch it out. Just let the fabric pull through the machine. And no back tack at the end. And go ahead and clip your threads down to about an inch. Now for this elbow dart, what we need to do is we want to finger press it. The seam allowance of the dart should be going down towards the wrist. So if you need to, on this side of the fabric, you can go ahead and start to press it down. And then come back over to the wrong side. And now at this point, pressing it down is going this direction towards the wrist. And I can finger press this right down to every little stitch on here. So if you do this correctly, you should see all these little tiny blue specks from the blue thread. For this dart, right now, we don't have to go over to an iron and iron and press this and everything. We'll get that a little bit later. Up here in the cap of the sleeve, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in two rows 
of basting stitch. And then later on, we're gonna use those to ease and gather some of the sleeve so it will start to cup inwards and form for the shoulder. The type of sleeve that we're sewing in today is gonna to be what's called a set-in sleeve. So basically, the sleeve will become one complete subassembly and the bodice will be an independent subassembly. And then eventually we'll put the two together in one complete circle. So up here at the cap of the sleeve, we'll put in these two rows of basting stitches. Come over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to do that now. For the beginners, when I like to teach the, um, to doing the E stitch, it's nice when you have two different color threads. So this is the point where we're gonna switch from our darker cool color to our brighter warm color for the top stitch thread, but we're gonna leave the bobbin with that darker color. So for instance, I have blue in my bobbin and I'm switching now to my orange for the top thread. So go ahead and cut off your blue, tie on your warm color, and let's pull this all the way through. And now you can see I have orange from my top stitch thread and blue is the bobbin from underneath. For the basting stitch, we want to set our machine all the way to the largest number. So for instance, five or six. You also want to pull your threads here at the beginning extra long. So as long as your hand plus your fingers. The first stitch that we're going to do, it's going to be here in the cap of the sleeve. We're going to start from the double notches of the back and we're going to sew all along the cap to the single notch here of the front. You want to make sure that when you're sewing this, you're not stretching anything and we're just turning this flat on the tabletop of the machine. Another thing we're going to do is for the the um, first stitch, we're going to stitch exactly at half of an inch. So come in here to the double notches, line up your raw edge with the half inch, make sure your threads are to the back, make sure your machine is set for a basting stitch, hold the threads down, and start stitching without any back tacks. When you get to the front notch, pull this out of the machine and cut the threads extra long. Now come back and double check that your stitch looks like it's very accurate, half of an inch the whole distance. The reason being is we're going to reference this stitch when we start sewing this back to the bodice and we want to sew exactly along the same half inch line. Now what we're going to do is a second row of basting. Again, we're going to start at the double notch of the back, but this time you're going to sew half the distance, so one quarter allowance. Basically, you can just eyeball it so it's halfway between the raw edge and that seam with that we just did. Do the same thing here where you're pulling your threads extra long. For your first stitch, don't do any back tacks and make sure you hold down the threads in the back. So for me, basically, the width of my foot is half of an inch. So I can see the threads here on this side of the foot and I can see the raw edge here on this side of the foot and I'm just following perfectly right in between those. Once you get down to the front notch, let's take this off of the machine. Again, you're gonna cut your threads extra long. Get your iron nice and hot and bring your sleeve here to your ironing table. What we're going to do is, let's go ahead and press this dart. Remembering that the dart seam allowance is going down towards the wrist, I'm going to flip this over. 
This is the flat side of the fabric, and then here's the bump where the layers are stacked. So I'm going to press this dart going towards the wrist. And I'm holding it up on the tabletop right at the dart tip. And my iron is passing right to the dart tip, but not going beyond that. Then we can flip this over. Press the other side of the dart tip. I'm also just getting it flat and smooth down here in the wrist area. And then up here at the cap of the sleeve where we just put these uh, basting stitches in here. Let's go ahead and press this sleeve all nice and flat. This is basically our last chance to come in here and press this flat. And I'm going to go ahead and just press this wrist or the elbow dart one last time. And then to handle this, what I'll do is I'll fold it here along that elbow dart. Now you remember that we spent a lot of time measuring the armholes here and here. We wanted to make sure that the back armhole was half of an inch longer than the front. And we balanced them out. Then we drafted the sleeve. The sleeve armhole we had to make sure was balanced and matches back to this armhole here. And everything about that was dependent on your pencil line. Now that we've moved into muslin, your pencil line is this sewing stitch right here. So when we did our stay stitches on the front and back bodice armholes, and then we did our ease stitch here in the sleeve, those have to be exactly what you had here on your paper. So now we know that this stay stitch and this stay stitch is balanced according to this sleeve right along that ease stitch. These, this location of this armhole was critical. If you remember, we had measured out to find this point here and this point down in here. And if you change that, you're going to mess everything up when we sew the sleeve in. So when I come over here, this blue stitch that I put in here, my stay stitch, is also acting like my seam allowance line from the pattern piece. Now, if I didn't sew this at exactly half of an inch, then basically what I'm doing is I'm changing the shape of my armhole and I'm changing the distance of my armhole. So now this will no longer fit correctly back to the sleeve. At this point, after stay stitching the front armhole, what we need to do is we need to come in and we need to check from the raw edge back to the stay stitch to see did you sew this at exactly half of an inch. For this example, I'm going to show you some areas where it is correct and it is incorrect. So for instance right here, I'm measuring from my raw edge back in towards the seam itself and I can see that everything is perfectly lined up. If I move down to this location here and I'm going from the raw edge measuring back to my blue seam, I can see that it's not half of an inch. It's coming up at five-eighths of an inch. So the blue line here is incorrect 
and I'm making the measurement of my armhole larger. So now this will not fit correctly back to my sleeve. Another common mistake is when students get out here to the end, when they're finishing the last little bit of sewing, they will seem to kind of drift off a little bit. And you'll notice, so I have at the top here where if I line up my ruler with the raw edge and I measure inwards, I can see out here I'm almost an eighth of an inch too big as well. And I see this mistake quite often. And the reason is, is as you're sewing under the machine, this is kind of the part where you're almost like letting go and the fabric ends up drifting a little bit. So you have to make sure you control it under the needle all the way to that last stitch and it has to be exactly half of an inch. Uh, here's another mistake that I see often. So this is the neckline from the front. And the mistake that we're seeing here is the sewing went on a straight line for a while. Then it will turn a sharp corner and go straight again for a while. And then you can see now it's a smooth curve the rest of the way. But the, the mistake here is the distance from here to here is way bigger than half of an inch. So again, this is one eighth too big going from the raw edge into here. So you can see the original neckline from the pattern piece is a smooth curve the whole way and it's only straight for that those first two stitches right here. And again, I'm showing where as someone is sewing on the machine, sometimes they'll allow the raw edge to just kind of drift away. So up at the top here, I can see that this is a good eighth of an inch too big. In this example, what I would do is, after I double check my measurements, I would take this stitch out and redo it again. Now on your front armhole, go ahead and come back in here and let's check to make sure you've sewn the seam allowance at exactly half of an inch. And then on the front neckline, let's go ahead and also check to make sure that you've sewn this at exactly half of an inch. And your first two stitches here should be going square with the center front. down here at the waist. So we've sewn over the dart. Just make sure the dart is pointing towards the center front. Let's come in here and check our seam allowance. On your back armhole, come in here and check and make sure that you've sewn perfectly one half of an inch from the raw edge. And let's check the back neckline. Down here at the back waist, double check that your dart seam allowance is pointing towards center back. And the waist line is exactly half of an inch from the raw edge. Now on your sleeve, let's check the seam allowance. So this should be one inch from the raw edge. And make sure your wrist line is perfectly lined up with that. Here at the cap of the sleeve, the first row of stitching was half of an inch from the raw edge. And that one is the most important because we're gonna use that stitch as our guideline when we're sewing our sleeve to the bodice itself. If you messed up anywhere on this half inch basting stitch, I would immediately take it out and re-sew it again because it's a very important stitch. The smaller stitch here that we did at a quarter inch is not as important. So if there's anything that you're measuring 
and you you don't trust it or you don't like it, maybe it's off by a sixteenth, maybe it's off by an eighth, I would seriously consider to go ahead and just pop that seam, pull it out, and sew in another one. It's super important that your sewing machine is going to represent the line that you want as a designer. So when I go back, I have to follow this raw edge perfectly to get that same exact line that I've drawn on my pattern piece. We can see that we've stay stitched the neck and armhole from our bodices. We put our waists and uh, shoulder darts in here, pressed everything flat and clean, and then we did our stay stitch at the waistline. Then for the sleeve, we sewed in our elbow dart, our stay stitch here at the wrist level, and then up here we put in two rows of basting stitches, and we left the threads long for later on when we need to ease those in for the fitting for the sleeve. And then we press this all flat and clean. At this stage now, what we're ready to do is we're going to start treating these as two separate complete projects. So the sleeve itself is going to be one complete sub-assembly and the front and back bodice is going to be another sub-assembly. For those of you who are following this video as part of an assignment, go ahead and take the time to make sure all of your darts are, are bowing upwards on the tabletop. Have your front and back bodice together in the sleeve over here. And take a picture of this so I can see your progress so far. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to sew up the side seams and the shoulders of the bodice. We're going to sew up the underarm seams of the sleeve. And then we're going to put the two together and do a fitting back to our dress form.